Remember back in high school when your math teacher told you that you wouldn't have a calculator in your pocket at all times? How could they have not known that we were headed to a time where not only would you have a calculator in your pocket at all times, you would have the entire computer in your pocket. This video is about pocket computing and how we got to where we are today. Small computers have been a thing since the late 1960s. The first pocket computer was a humble portable calculator, eventually a ubiquitous item in every home. A little about calculators. In the beginning, all calculations were done using a mechanical adding machine. 1950s saw electronically driven stepped gear calculators that were still very large and printed results onto a paper tape. In 1967, the Texas Instruments Caltech, which printed results onto a strip of paper and ran on batteries, was considered the first portable calculator. It weighed three pounds and was made of solid aluminum. By the 1970s, the Busycom Handy was small enough to fit in your pocket and was the first to use an integrated circuit and LED display. I have a Califax 890, which is similar in design and style. In 1972, the first scientific calculator was introduced by Hewlett Packard, the HP 35. Two years later, the HP 65, widely known as the first pocket computer, came out. It had programmable magnetic cards that could be used to store up to 100 instructions. By the early 1980s, cheap pocket calculators were readily available. Most people didn't have a computer in their home, but they probably had a calculator. A little about computers. As the 80s saw the rise of home computers, manufacturers were looking to make their machines smaller. Although far from pocket size, the Osborne one was released in 1981 at a weight of 24 pounds and sporting a handle on the case. It was the first portable computer, which still needed to be plugged into the wall for power. In 1983, the Tandy TRS-80 Model 100 hit the market and was the smallest battery-powered PC to that point. It was originally marketed as a micro-executive workstation, basically integrating the keyboard and a small LCD into the form factor of a paper notebook, and it only weighed about three pounds. Not small enough to fit in a pocket, but much smaller than previous portable offerings. Tandy continued to release portable computers in the 80s that improved on the specs and features. A pocket-sized computer didn't exist until the Pocket PC was introduced in 1989. At a price of $2,000 American, the first IBM-compatible sub-notebook, which ran MS-DOS on two AA batteries with a clamshell design like a laptop, but closer in size to a VHS tape. You'd still need a larger-than-average pocket, but it was feature-rich for its size at the time. Similarly, the Atari portfolio was also released this year, which is featured in the ATM scene in Terminator 2. Draw three zero zero bucks. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Hey, it worked. All right. Easy money. Come on. Not as capable as the Pocket, but a smaller and much cheaper option for on-go computing. A laptop in the late 80s was still a big boy. Most of them still had a carry handle. This is my 1994 IBM ThinkPad next to a modern laptop. It would take up a lot of real estate in a backpack or attache case. In the early 90s, pocket organizers were something you could find at most department stores, made by brands like Rolodex, Sharp, and Casio. A precursor to the personal directory assistant, except most of them operated in a standalone fashion without the ability to connect to your home computer. Pocket computing may have begun with HP calculators, but in 1975, a patent was filed by Indian businessman Sam Petroda for a device known as the Pocket Diary. It was the first text input pocket device. Pocket organizers were the progression of the pocket diary idea. In 1993, the innovators at Apple entered the small PC space with the Apple Newton. Hey, Dolph, take a memo on your Newton. Beat up Martin. Bah! Yeah! Suffice to say, the product was a flop. At the introductory price of $700, it was a very expensive niche device. It did connect with Apple home computers, but not PCs. The Newton had some features that were ahead of their time, specifically the touchscreen and handwriting recognition. Palm would also try to incorporate similar tech into their devices. Speaking of Palm, in 1996, the Palm Pilot 1000 was introduced at $300, and they managed to make themselves the biggest thing in pocket computing for the next 10 years. It was smaller than the Newton and synced with both PC and Mac hardware. Palm Pilots had the most success and longest life of a pocket computer brand. The wide adoption of Palm devices helped to usher in the smartphone era. I have three Palm devices from the early 2000s. 
They would have been very handy in the time before smartphones, but now, other than playing a few classic games, they wouldn't be very useful. Though, they did have some interesting accessories. Also, as someone who has attempted to use these devices in modern times, the software for the computer side of things isn't very intuitive. Around the same time, Motorola introduced two-way pagers, and they started to find their way into the hands of young people. A little about pagers. A type of pager had been around since 1921, believe it or not, although they worked over radios as opposed to the telephone. The modern pager that we would associate with doctors and drug dealers would come about in the late 70s. By the 90s, more people had pagers than cell phones because they were cheaper and payphones were still widely available. Two ways used cell phone networks so you could talk back and forth in two directions with what we would later call text messages. Some two-way pagers had organizational apps built in, like contacts or a date book. There were attempts made near the turn of the century to have all these devices rolled into one. Obviously, these small devices had limited capabilities compared to a home computer, but they packed a lot into some of them. I have what I consider to be the best product ever made in the pocket PC space, at least in my opinion. The HP Jornada 720. Released in 2000, it runs a version of Windows CE that has many apps that are still useful now. I use it to write my scripts for videos and save my ideas. I can use a compact flash card to save my documents and open them on my computer or iPad. It's not exactly seamless. The killer feature, though, is the three-quarter size full keyboard. It also fits in my pocket, but it's a little too bulky to run around with, so it usually stays next to my bed when I wake up and want to get something down on paper before I forget. It also had internet connectivity using PCM CIA cards. Before Wi-Fi was everywhere, you had to find a landline or use a connection to a cell network. It would basically just be to download your email a few times a day. In 2001, Apple released the iPod, which was a pocket-sized computer that played music, and it could keep some information like contacts in a calendar, much like PDAs at the time, although there was no way to input this on the device itself. iPod was a runaway success, and Apple bit the future on personal portable devices when the iPhone launched in 2007. Supposedly having as much computing power as Apollo 11 era NASA computers, iPhone did everything that PDAs, two-ways, MP3 players, GPS units, and more could do. The revolution caused other companies to make similar devices utilizing the Android operating system. Some of them had keyboards, which I always preferred. Samsung had the greatest success with the Galaxy series, making them Apple's biggest competition in the smartphone space. I like the old pocket tech, and viewing it through the lens of today is interesting. Nowadays, you can do everything with a little computer in your pocket. Take and edit a photo or video and share it across the world in less time than it takes to make a cup of coffee. Write and print a document without ever having to leave your couch. Buy a car, trade stocks, the list goes on. But we have to appreciate the journey that got us here and the success and failures that shaped the world of small computers that we take for granted almost every day. That is my video about the history of pocket PCs. Thanks you guys so much for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, all the other stuff. I'll see you in the next one. The iPod was a runaway success, and Apple bit the future on personal por 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 Oh, why? It did not connect with Apple. It did connect. Oh. It did. I'm reading it like a Chinese instruction manual. Most success, longest life, pocket computer brand. Wide adoption, Palm devices helped usher smartphone era. A little about pagers. A pager has been paging since the first page was written in the Bible. That's a long time. You guys think Jesus had a pager though? Like for real, he could probably could have used a pager you'd have to get a special cord to run this out and it has a phone jack on the other end. Plug it in there. You're all lying, baby. I remember when we didn't have cell phones and we didn't have smartphones and, you know, you had to go do stuff. You wanted to an answer to a question, you couldn't just ask your phone. I just sound like an old man. God. Because I am an old man. Get off my lawn. Even though it's what? It's 11.04. So, so there's my calculator launch again. Yay, I'm done, I think.
Time to hit the edit. Time to hit the edit. Time to hit the edit. Hit the edit. Time to hit the edit. Hit the edit. Time to hit.